Story six of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Ten Christmas Stories by Edward Everett Hale. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Story six The Two Princes A Story for Children. One There was a king of Hungary whose name was Adalbert. When he lived at home, which was not often, it was in a castle of many towers, and many halls, and many stairways, in the city of Buda, by the side of the river Donau. He had four daughters, and only one son, who was to be the king after him, whose name was Ladislas. But it was the custom of those days, as boys and girls grew up, to send them for their training to some distance from their home, even for many months at a time, to try a little experiment on them, and see how they fared. And so, at the time I tell you of, there was staying in the castle of Buda the Prince Bella, who was the son of the King of Bohemia, and he and the boy Ladislaus studied their lessons together, and flew their kites, and hunted for otters, and rode with the falconers together. One day, as they were studying with the tutor, who was a priest named Stephen, he gave to them a book of fables, and each read a fable. Ladislaus read the fable of the Skylark. The Skylark sat on the topmost bough of the savvy tree, and was waked by the first ray of the sun. Then the Skylark flew and flew, up and up to the topmost arch of the sky, and sang the hymn of the morning. But a frog, who was croaking in the cranberry marsh, said, why do you take such pains and fly so high? The sun shines here, and I can sing here. And the bird said, God has made me to fly. God has made me to see. I will fly as high as he will lift me, and sing so loud that all shall hear me. And when the little Prince Ladislaus had read the fable, he cried out, the skylark is the bird for me, and I will paint his picture on my shield after school this morning. Then the Prince Bella read the next fable, the fable of the water rat. A good beaver found one day a little water rat almost dead. His father and mother had been swept away by a freshet, and the little rat was almost starved. But the kind beaver gave him of her own milk, and brought him up in her own lodge with her children and he got well and could eat and swim and dive with the best of them. But one day there was a great alarm that the beaver's dam was giving way before the water. Come one, come all, said the grandfather of the beavers, come to the rescue. So they all started, carrying sticks and bark with them, the water rat and all. But as they swam under an old oak tree's root, the water rat stopped in the darkness and then he quietly turned round and went back to the hut. It will be hard work, said he, and there are enough of them. There were enough of them. They mended the dam by working all night and by working all day. But as they came back, a great wave of the freshet came pouring over the dam, and though the dam stood firm, the beavers were swept away, away and away, down the river into the sea, and they died there. And the river rat lived in their grand house by himself, and had all their stores of black birch bark and willow bark and sweet poplar bark for his own. That was a clever rat, said the Prince Bella. I will paint the rat on my shield when school is done. And the priest Stephen was very sad when he said so, and the Prince Ladislaus was surprised. So they went to the playroom and painted their shields. The shields were made of the bark of hemlock trees. Ladislaus chipped off the rough bark till the shield was white, and made on the place the best skylark he could paint there. And Bella watched him, and chipped off the rough bark from his shield, and said, You paint so well, now paint my water rat for me. No, said Ladislaus, though he was very good-natured, I cannot paint it well you must paint it yourself. And Bella did so. 2. So the boys both grew up, and one became king of Hungary, and one was the king of the Bohemians. And King Ladislaus carried on his banner the picture of a skylark, 
and the ladies of the land embroidered skylarks for the scarfs and for the pennons of the soldiers and for the motto of the banner were the latin words proprior deo which means nearer to god and king bella carried the water rat for his cognizance and the ladies of his land embroidered water rats for the soldiers and his motto was enough and in these times a holy man from palestine came through all the world and he told how the pilgrims to the tomb of christ were beaten and starved by the saracens and how many of them were dying in dungeons and he begged the princes and the lords and ladies for the love of god and the love of christ that they would come and rescue these poor people and secure the pilgrims in all coming time and king ladislaus said to his people we will do the best we can and serve god as he shows us how and the people said we will do the best we can and save the people of christ from the infidel and they all came together to the place of arms and the king chose a hundred of the bravest and healthiest of the young men all of whom told the truth and no one of whom was afraid to die and they marched with him to the land of christ and as they marched they sang proprior deo nearer to thee and peter the hermit went to bohemia and told the story of the cruel saracens and the sufferings of the pilgrims to king bella and his people and the king said is it uh, far away and the hermit said far far away and the king said ah well they must get out as they got in we will take care of bohemia so the hermit went on to saxony to tell his story and king ladislaus and his hundred true young men rode and rode day by day and came to the mount of olives just in time to be at the side of the great king godfrey when he broke the paynim's walls and dashed into the city of jerusalem and king ladislaus and his men rode together along the way of tears where christ bore the cross-beam upon his shoulder and he sat on the stone where the cross had been reared and he read the gospel through again and there he prayed his god that he might always bear his cross bravely and that like the lord jesus he might never be afraid to die three and when they had all come home to hungary their time hung very heavy on their hands and the young men said to the king lead us to war against the finns or lead us to war against the rus but the king said no if they spare our people we spare their people let us have peace and he called the young men who had fought with him and he said the time hangs heavy with us let us build a temple here to the living god and to the honor of his son we will carve on its walls the story we have seen and while we build we will remember zion and the way of tears and the young men said we are not used to building nor am i said the king but let us build and build as best we can and give to god the best we have and the best we know so they dug the deep trenches for the foundations and they sent north and south and east and west for the wisest builders who loved the lord jesus and the builders came and the carvers came and the young men learned to use the chisel and the hammer and the great cathedral grew year by year as a pine tree in the forest grows above the birches and the yew trees on the ground and once king bella came to visit his kinsmen and they rode out to see the builders and king ladislaus dismounted from his horse and asked bella to dismount and gave to him a chisel and a hammer no said the king bella it will hurt my hands in my land we have workmen whom we pay to do these things but i like to see you work so he sat upon his horse till dinner time and he went home and year by year the cathedral grew and a thousand pinnacles were built upon the towers and on the roof and along the walls and on each pinnacle there fluttered a golden skylark and on the altar in the cathedral was a scroll of crimson and on the crimson scroll were letters of gold and the letters were in the latin language and said proprior deo 
and on a blue scroll underneath, in the language of the people, they were translated, and it said, Nearer to thee. 4. And another hermit came, and he told the king that the Black Death was ravaging the cities of the East, that half the people of Constantinople were dead, that the great fair at Adrianople was closed, that the ships on the Black Sea had no sailors, and that there would be no food for the people on the lower river. And the king said, is the duke dead whom we saw at bucharest is the emperor dead who met me at constantinople no your grace said the hermit it pleases the lord that in the black death only those die who live in hovels and in towns the lord has spared those who live in castles and in palaces then said king ladislaus i will live as my people live and i will die as my people die the Lord Jesus had no pillow for his head, and no house for his lodging, and as the least of his brethren fares, so will I fare, and as I fare, so will they. So the king and the hundred braves pitched their tents on the high land above the old town, around the new cathedral, and the queen and the ladies of the court went with them. And day by day the king and the queen and the hundred braves and their hundred ladies went up and down the filthy wines and the courts of the city, and they said to the poor people there, Come, live as we live, and die as we die. And the people left the holes of pestilence, and came and lived in the open air of God. And when the people saw that the king fared as they fared, the people said, we also will seek God as the king seeks him, and will serve him as he serves him. And day by day they found others who had no homes fit for Christian men, and brought them upon the high land, and built all together their tents and booths and tabernacles, open to the sun and light, and to the smile and kiss and blessing of the fresh air of God. And there grew a new and beautiful city there. And so it was that when the black death passed from the east to the west, the angel of death left the city of Buddha on one side, and the people never saw the pestilence with their eyes. The angel of death passed by them and rested upon the cities of Bohemia. 5. And King Ladislaus grew old, his helmet seemed to him more heavy, his sleep seemed to him more coy, but he had little care, for he had a loving wife, and he had healthy noble sons and daughters, who loved God, and who told the truth, and who were not afraid to die. But one day, in his happy prosperity, there came to him a messenger running, who said in the council, Your Grace, the Red Russians have crossed the Red River of the North, and they are marching with their wives and their children, with their men of arms in front, and their wagons behind, and they say they will find a land nearer the sun, and to this land are they coming. And the old king smiled, and he said to those that were left of the hundred brave men who took the cross with him, Now we will see if our boys could have fought at Godfrey's side. For us it matters little. One way or another way we will come nearer to God. And the armorers mended the old armor, and the young men girded on swords which had never been tried in fight, and the pennons that they bore were embroidered by their sweethearts and sisters as in the old days of the Crusades, and with the same device of a skylark in mid-heaven, and the motto, Nearer my God to thee. And there came from the great cathedral the wise men who had come from all the lands, they found the king, and they said to him, Your grace, we know how to build the new defences for the land, and we will guard the river ways, that the barbarians shall never enter them. And when the people knew that the red Russians were on the way, they met in the square, and marched to the palace, and Robert the Smith mounted the steps of the palace and called the king. And he said, The people are here to bid the king be of good heart. The people bid me say, that they will die for their king and for his land. And the king took from his wife's neck the blue ribbon that she wore, with a golden skylark on it, and bound it round the blacksmith's arm, and said, 
If I die, it is nothing. If I live, it is nothing. That is in God's hand. But whether we live or die, let us draw as near him as we may. And the blacksmith Robert turned to the people, and with his loud voice told what the king had said. And the people answered in the shout which the Hungarians shout to this day, Let us die for our king, let us die for our king. And the king called the queen hastily, and they and their children led the host to the great cathedral. And the old priest Stephen, who was ninety years old, stood at the altar, and he read the gospel where it says, Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And he read the other gospel where the Lord says, And I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And he read the epistle where it says, No man liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. And he chanted the psalm, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. And fifty thousand men with one heart and one voice joined with him. And the king joined, and the queen, to sing, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. And they marched from the cathedral, singing in the language of the country, Proprior Deo, which is to say in our tongue, Nearer my God to thee. And the aged braves who had fought with Godfrey, and the younger men who had learned of arms in the university, went among the people and divided them into companies for the war. And Robert the blacksmith, and all the guild of the blacksmiths, and of the braziers, and of the coppersmiths, and of the whitesmiths, even the goldsmiths and the silversmiths, made weapons for the war. And the masons and the carpenters and the ditchers and delvers marched out with the cathedral builders to the narrow passes of the river, and built new the fortresses. And the Lady Constance and her daughters and every lady in the land went to the churches and the convents and threw them wide open. And in the kitchens they baked bread for the soldiers, and in the churches they spread couches for the sick or for the wounded. And when the Red Russians came in their host, there was not a man or woman or child in all Hungary, but was in the place to which God had called him, and was doing his best in his place for his God, for the Church of Christ, and for his brothers and sisters of the land. And the host of the Red Russians was turned aside, as at the street corner you have seen the dirty water of a gutter turned aside by the curbstone. They fought one battle against the Hungarian host, and were driven as the blackbirds are driven by the falcons. And they gathered themselves, and swept westward, and came down upon the passes to Bohemia. And there were no fortresses at the entrance to Bohemia, for King Bela had no learned men who loved him, and there was no army in the plains of Bohemia, for his people had been swept away in the pestilence and there were no brave men who had fought with godfrey and knew the art of arms for in those old days the king had said it is far away and we have enough in bohemia so the red russians who called themselves the czechs took his land from him and they lived there till this day and the king without a battle fled from the back door of his palace in the disguise of a charcoal man and he left his queen and his daughters to be cinder-girls in the service of the chief of the Red Russians. And the false charcoal man walked by day and walked by night, till he found refuge in the castle of the King Ladislaus, and he met him in the old schoolroom where they read the fables together. And he remembered how the water-rat came to the home of the beavers, and he said to King Ladislaus, ah me do you remember when we were boys together do you remember the fable of the skylark and the fable of the water rat i remember both said the king and he was silent god has been very kind to you said the beggar and he has been very hard to me and the king said nothing but the old priest stephen said god is always kind but God will not give us other fruit than we sow seed for. 
The king here has tried to serve God as he knew how. With one single eye he has looked on the world of God, and he has made the best choice he knew. And God has given him what he thought not of, brave men for his knights, wise men for his counsel, a free and loving people for his army. And you have not looked with a single eye. Your eye was darkened. You saw only what served yourself, and you said, This is enough, and you had no brave men for your knights, no wise men for your counsel, no people for your army. You chose to look down and to take a selfish brute for your adviser, and he has led you so far. We choose to look up, to draw nearer God, and where he leads we follow. Then King Ladislaus ordered that in the old schoolroom a bed should be spread for Bella, and that very day his breakfast and his dinner and his supper should be served to him, and he lived there till he died. End of Story 6